welcome to The Right Perspective. Today, we're going to recap and discuss two movies written and directed by John Singleton. Boys in the Hood, released in 1991, which was nominated for two Academy Awards, and it was a winner of several awards, including an NAACP Image Award and an MTV Movie Award. And we're going to review and discuss Baby Boy, released in 2001. And it was nominated for several awards, um, including the NAACP Image Award, many others. In the Black community, both of these movies are considered classics, without a doubt. But today, we will determine whether they are classics from of the right perspective. <laughs> we'll do a recap and we'll discuss plot and direction and characters and acting and the cinematography, sound music. And then we'll take a vote using a voting symbol picked especially for this discussion. But let's start with intros. Kick us off, bro. Hi, I'm Aubrey Wright. I'm the oldest. I'm Janaya Wright. I'm the middle. Hi, I'm Brittany Wright and give it a bop bye. I'm the youngest. <laughs> Oh, you're feeling jazzy. That's really great. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're doing, <laughs> you're so jazzy. So we're doing, and just for those who haven't seen these movies, they have nothing to do with jazz. <laughs> the movies have nothing to do with jazz. Brittany doing that literally has nothing to do with the content we're covering tonight. Just want to make sure we're all jazz. tracking. Life is jazz. I, I, and these I, movies I have, are about life. <laughs> Okay. All right. We see what mood you're in. Okay. So, you know, we, we generally don't do multiple movies. We have a couple of times we've done multiple movies. One of our viewers recommended that we review these two movies together because they're both based in LA, both done by John Singleton, but one features a black man that was raised without a consistent fatherly presence. That's baby boy. And then one features a black man uh, with a very consistent fatherly presence and that's boys in the hood. And so one of our viewers recommended we review them both together and kind of see how John Singleton handled these two different storylines. And it's really interesting because the movies are also done 10 years apart from each other. So we also get to see an evolution in John Singleton's um, career. So I think this was an interesting pairing and I'm looking forward to getting into it. But y'all, we have to start with the voting symbols. And, um, and I are we doing the voting symbol for one movie, like for one all together or one for each one? How are we doing that? Well, what do y'all think? I, I got to tell you, I personally <laughs> coming into this, I have like, I feel like I have different ratings for these two movies. So I kind of want to do them separate, but. It's just that um, you should just, put, you should make it um, a, just make it a weight, one of those weights and it's a ton and it'll just be one of them and it'll be a single ton. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Yes! <laughs> I'm sorry. We uh, have on I wasn't, record I wasn't, our brother being a cornball. Brittany, it has taken our entire lives, but we yes. have finally brought Aubrey yeah. to the corny side. Yes. He has managed to avoid it. Step into uh, the corn side. <laughs> <laughs> Step into just... the corn side. <laughs> He is a <laughs> that, was, that was the corniest thing that's ever been said on any podcast. Yes. And it was not by me or Brittany. And that was I, the right perspective. I Everyone have a good evening. I wasn't <laughs> I saw I saw it. I wasn't mature enough to let it go. This is what <laughs> no, I, I saw it just now. Or I a double ton. No, the single <laughs> No, each of us would have a one single, single ton. ton. I love it. So Do you know what I'm talking about? Those. Yeah, it's like, those... A, it's like a bar. No, 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 no. No, he's it's talking like a... about where it's like it's weighted like this and it goes like that. Man, I wish I no, had not a, a thing I could show you. I'm going to text you. Oh, I thought I'm going to text was you guys. Scale. No, I'm going to text you guys. Do you the... mean like the eye shaped? It's like a touch. It's more shaped like I forget what's, what, what the name of that shape is, but it's not a square. It's like a trapezoid. Yeah. It's a trapezoid. Type deal, bar. But it's, it's not a bar oh. though. I, I, I'm gonna text you what I mean. Okay. I'm gonna text is you. It, I'm gonna text is you. It the you know, as soon as I, as soon as I text it to you, you're like, oh, okay. Is it that thing that fell on top of Pam on that episode of Martin? 
Is that what you're talking about? Is it like the normally like a gold bar, but it's a tag? No, 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 no. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's like it's shaped like a like a little. It's black, like, like a gram. You know how like when you were in, in yeah, school, yeah, it's, it, it's and like, they had like one gram, five yeah, gram. Yeah, like a cylinder. Yeah. But, but the top of the circle is a little smaller. Like. Yeah. I know what you're talking. Yeah. That's about. That's right. That's right. The cartoony. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Well, bro, what I'll do is when, when I edit the video, I'll put it on the screen. So for those yeah. our viewers that tune in and watch the video, you'll get to see whatever it is Aubrey's talking about. Listen, <laughs> I'm, ta I'm talking about. I'm talking about. It's a ton. Just, just make sure you don't put two, because I'm talking about a single ton. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I gotta say that is better and than any of the ideas I had come up with. Any, I gotta say, I want to. <laughs> I want to make sure that you put everything that we spoke about, though, as cartoons. <laughs> Every last weight that we spoke about needs to come up in the middle of the screen when we say it. It's been like, that wasn't it. Mm -mm. Right. And then Aubrey will keep clearly explaining what he's talking about. It'll just about. be like, <laughs> keep flashing we'll, on the screen. We'll be like, not getting it. So. <laughs> So you're just gonna have it, you're just gonna have what I'm talking about static on one side. Right. And, then, <laughs> and then we'll just be static. <laughs> Someone like shaking their head, like I don't I don't see whether they don't. Yeah, this is good. Okay. I don't know why they don't get it. This is What's good. <laughs> so this is incentive. Oh, for all and of I'm our about to get and I'm about to get deeper on you. Oh ooh. I'm about to get deeper. Do it. Because see, when I said a single ton, we all had different from pictures in her head. Mm -hmm. Same way when we watch a movie. Oh my God. I think we're done here, folks. Skip it a bye bye. <laughs> Life is shit. It's so much shit. What he's saying is so much shit. I mean, and then if yes. well, I, I was going to let it go, but you know what? Listen. I got to say, <laughs> these characters in both of these movies, they were really grappling with the weight of like systemic mm. inequities. And what's Ugh. heavier than that? What's heavier than that? You know, talk about sounds like that might weigh a single, at least a single ton. <laughs> at least. Well, let me just say, my nominations <laughs> pale in comparison and corniness. Like for Boys in the Hood, I was going to recommend box haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's just it like it like it is so simple at the time. And then the other idea I had was like the bail ding balls that Furious had, like the two metal stress balls. Yeah, because Actually, again, it's good, like that's not, that's not bad. That's a good. One. It's like the it's like at the end of the one. day, all of the characters were just grappling with such a high level of stress. But and but that but was that coping. But not know? only that that punctuated the, the climax of the movie. Yes, it did. In, in my opinion, because of course you're going to break it down, but that was the crossroads. Yeah. He was going to go down one path or the other. Ooh. And it was definitely, it was definitely punctuated by um, the whatever those things are called. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, that was a good one. That was, yeah. good. That was a good one. And then for baby boy, I had the low rider bike. Because That's it was a, it was a, a symbol one. of Jody. Just what? Where's where's your belongings, Jody? You don't J own anything in so, the world. Jody, Jody. Your, your, your your ideas are surprisingly <laughs> yes. And then surprisingly cogent. Oh, I, I hope I don't ruin it with my last. Yep. One. Don't say that. No, give it. No. Give it. Give it. <laughs> give it up. Uh, right. If we were gonna do them both together, and they were each only going to get their like, we were gonna do one symbol for the combo of movies. My recommendation was going to be the block, like just the block, because it's like the neighborhood, like the street, you know, because all of it back. happens. It happens Listen. on the block. The the death, the but love, what I, the but life. But what I was, but what it's I was saying, like that. But what I was saying was that uh, symbol about those balls and the bike. Those were good ideas. Those are great. <laughs> yes. Man, and great. people been knocking 2021. There are some amazing things happening in this. Listen, <laughs> those first two ideas were. were... <laughs> but I think Listen. I think we're all in agreement that we're going to give each of these movies a single ton. I mean, or I not. feel like I feel like, or, or not. not, or not. And, are we in agreement got, on this? Yeah, and I got to tell you, I or a gun. I have not. <laughs> oh. 
No, no one guns. did. No one did crack in these movies. <laughs> okay, Brittany, oh, I don't okay. know. Watch. I should have never started off with the wire. No. But, uh, like <laughs> but this is, you're giving jazz listeners a really bad name. Okay. <laughs> but Very I'll tell bad. you, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not deciding on one of the movies. So mm-hmm. Oh, we have to pick either or. We can't just pick both if we want. Well, I, I mean, they each, we're, we're, each can get a again. single time. Yeah. I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's do the recap. Yes, rest they're in peace, very John brief. Singleton. He passed away in 2019. Ah, oh, man, a, a brilliant mind. So Such much a brilliant mind. of his and contribution. Passion for the of the Black community. Oh, completely. And we haven't talked about this, um, but we could like have some podcast episodes where we just talk about the life of uh, mm-hmm. a director or an actor or something. I think that would be really interesting, but that would be one where we would we'd really fun. do some research and, you know, that could be really interesting. I'd like that. And John Singleton would be a great kickoff for that. Frankly, I mean, there's just in terms of a contribution to the black community, there's so much in terms of representation that is real, you know? Yeah. Okay, so let's hop into these uh, recaps and they are both brief and so they do not have the level of nuance and story time just because it's two so they're pretty brief um but hopefully for those who haven't seen the movies or haven't seen them in a very long time you're gonna get a solid gist for the basis of our discussion so for boys in the hood it is worth naming that there are some very recognizable and notable actors in this Cuba Gooding Jr., Angela mm-hmm. Bassett, Lawrence Fishburne, Ice Cube, Morris Chestnut, Hello. Mia Long, Regina yes. King, and other familiar faces. Okay, those are the big names, but many familiar faces in Boys in the Hood. Okay, so the movie centers around Jason Trey Styles, a young man that goes to live with his father, Jason Furious Styles, full time after getting into a little trouble at school. And while the parents are not together, they are both very clearly very stable presences in his life. You know, both are kind of upwardly mobile. The mother's in grad school. The father is an entrepreneur in the financial services industry. Normally his father, he'd see his father on the weekends. And so he has a solid base in that community when he goes to, to live there when he is 10 years old. The only visible challenge with the neighborhood where his father lives is that it is a lower income community that is plagued with many of the systemic elements common to lower income communities in this country, crime, gangs and over policing. And some of Trey's friends are involved in the criminal and gang activity, some are not. Trey goes to live with his father when he's 10 But the bulk of the movie actually occurs seven years later when he's 17. By then, Trey is doing well in school. He's got a great after-school job, and he is still a virgin. One of his friends, Ricky Baker, is a star athlete with a live-in girlfriend and and a baby. Another friend, who's actually Ricky's brother, Doughboy, has just gotten home from a stint in prison. And their other friends fall in different places along that spectrum. In the boys, we, they're doing normal teenager things. They talk about girls and sex and life after high school and going to college. They talk about their parents. You know, they hang out and, you know, they think they're cute. They think they're cool. We really get to know them and find affection for all of them and their little girlfriends and their family members when tragedy strikes. Ricky the young man that was on his way to college on an athletic scholarship and has a little baby girl is gunned down by some other kids that had tried to pick a fight with him at an earlier point. And he is the best friend of Trey. And Trey, a young man that has to this point managed to stay away from criminal activity, is drawn in. And he gets with his friend Doughboy And the two of them go to avenge Ricky's death. Fortunately, fortunately, Trey has a change of heart. And he kind of, you know, he steps away 
just in time to avoid being a part of the retaliation for Ricky's murder. But Doughboy, listen, his brother was murdered for no reason. There wasn't even a criminal activity reason. The brother was killed and he had so many wonderful possibilities just around the corner of a young baby, like I said. It's just, it, I mean, listen, I, 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 I was in tears at this point, okay? So you're watching this young man that you're just, you're so, you're so invested in. He's dead on the concrete. And Doughboy, his brother, listen, he, he, he has, you know, venom in his eyes and a gun in his pocket. And he and his friends, Trey doesn't go along, but, but Doughboy and his friends, they do go and kill the young men that killed Ricky. And so that's three or four more young men in, uh, killed in a fast food parking lot. And Doughboy himself, two weeks later, is murdered. And, you know, it isn't explicitly said in the movie, but you know the cycle continues because we know that Doughboy's friends probably went to avenge his murder. murder, And the cycle of violence just continues. So Trey and his girlfriend, we find out in the epilogue in the movie that Trey and his girlfriend um, do go on to college, but you don't get to see that. Visually, you are left with the heartbreak of seeing so much loss of life, young black men, senseless deaths. And that's how the movie wraps. And that brings us to uh, Baby Boy, another movie that has a lot of faces in it that you'll recognize. Tyrese Gibson, Omar Gooding, Taraji P. Henson, Snoop Dogg, Bing Rames, Monique. And um, this, and again, and other familiar faces, you know, don't have time to go through the whole list, but, but people you, you recognize. Baby Boy is uh, about a 20 year old guy named Joseph Jody Summers. And he has a, ma a major, <laughs> what I'm just gonna call failure to launch issue. Okay, I mean, when we meet him, he is living with his mother. He hangs out primarily with his unemployed friend named Sweet Pea that was recently incarcerated. Jody is selling weed. He has two babies by two different women, continues to impregnate people so they have to get abortions. He's sleeping around cavalierly. He just, <laughs> he just doesn't have anything going for him. And, and meanwhile, the people around him, while also stunted in different ways, are at least striving for more. And, and having some stability. I mean, his primary girlfriend, her name is Yvette, and she's actually quite devoted to him in spite of his like constant philandering and constant disrespect. Yvette, you know, she has her own place. She has a car, mm -hmm. she has a good job at the phone company. She's a very dedicated mother, you know? And then Jody's own mother, who by the way is only 36, herself and that gives you a little bit of sense of her story she owns her home she has a steady boyfriend she's finding balance in her life through her hobbies she's into gardening and she loves it okay and her boyfriend a formerly incarcerated person he's launched a gardening business that but it seems like it's thriving even sweet pea who is aimless for a good chunk of the movie even he joins a church and gets baptized so that he can turn over a new leaf and find some purpose. And so that just leaves Jody there, sitting there, unproductive, having tantrums, okay, hurting the people closest to him with his selfish and arguably childish behavior. He upgrades from selling weed to selling stolen clothes, but that's about it. Eventually, he does get a bit of a wake-up call when Yvette's ex-boyfriend Rodney gets out of prison and comes back and is violent toward Yvette. Rodney, actually in his jealousy, he attempts to kill Jody in a drive-by. He fails. But of course, Jody and Sweet Pea go and they kill Rodney. Okay. And then, you know, Jody decides to move in with Yvette and be a, an actual, you know, boyfriend to her. Um, you know, and he also he mends fences with his mother a bit, you know, and they had, their relationship had been strained um, during the course of the movie, just again, by his jealousy and his selfishness. But he does mend fences and they get to a bit of an understanding. And so we don't get any indication or, or, or implication even <laughs> that Jody has gotten a job, you know, or that he's decided to be faithful. 
Um, but but he is alive at the end of the movie, which means that anything is possible. And so that is something. Okay, and I try not to infuse too much opinion when I'm giving the recap, but it is like, <laughs> that's all you get at the end. Has Jody really turned things around? You don't get any indication clearly. So that's baby boy. So there's a there's a lot more that could go into those recaps, but those are the main points, bro. And so I, I think I hit the main yeah. things. I did to want know. to say Ricky had a son. In Not Boys a daughter. It was a son. Uh, yeah, Thank he had you. a son. Mm. Thank you. So those are the recaps. Girl, I mean, you saying that Jody was philandering. <laughs> that is my <laughs> Oh, that That's guy. my favorite thing for you to say. He was philandering. Yes. I mean, and it's like. Oh, that is hilarious. Oh, goodness. So, so what did y'all think? I mean, first of all, what about the experience of watching these two different movies? Same writer, same director, 10 year span in between. What was your experience in watching them? And then I think, Aubrey, you probably watched them real time when they came out, at least. I don't know if you did, sis. But what was it like to, to, to even prepare for this? this podcast well um i actually had not seen baby boy yet this was oh. the uh I, that movie for whatever reason never um i always knew it was out there but it just never grabbed my attention enough to want to watch it mm-hmm. and um yeah so now Boys, and, so it was interesting to watch them back to back because um, they end kind of like with the same, you know, John Singleton like title type card deal. And but I'm gonna just tell you, like, watching Boys in the Hood was one of the experiences in my life I'll always remember. Wow. You know? I'll always remember sitting in Showcase Cinemas East with in Pittsburgh fr- in Pittsburgh <laughs> with my friends and watching Ricky die. Mm. And um the um you know that scene was so just I can't even think of a word, but it was so explosive because it was a two tier thing because when he got shot in the knee, like you're like, oh, they took his career. You know, like that, that's your, well, my thought. And you're thinking that is going to be, you know, what they're going to snatch from him. But just two seconds later. And uh, it's just interesting because. Oh, the heartbreak. It, it's just interesting because oh. uh, 30 years later, I, st- I know what's going to happen. There's just one comedian and uh, Morris Chestnut was in the uh, audience in this big show. And he was he was like, what's up, Rick? He was like, every time I watch it, I think you will make it. Every time. <laughs> and he was joking, but it's amazing because you I, I still feel the tension yeah. up to that moment even, because the pacing of the movie oh. was so good. Yes, you felt like you grew up with them. Yes, indeed. Um, and you felt you were really invested in everybody and you realized how much was riding. And the other thing is, is that there are people in my life that I could correspond to all of these characters. Mm. And so from a, just from a, you know, growing up in Pittsburgh, especially around that time, we're talking about we're in the throes of violence and Pittsburgh was a very dangerous place because there was no direction of what was going on. Like you could just be somewhere. I, I'm I was at the bus stop one time. I got jumped by four dudes. I've I couldn't put, if them dudes were sitting in this room with me right now, I wouldn't know who they were. You know what I mean? And that's the type of you know city. We, well, the whole country had that type of climate at the time. That vibe, yeah. And so just. So just seeing that play out, you can really connect with it because that's how stuff was. It was like, you know, you, everything is okay. And all of a sudden something's happening and that's changing people's lives oh. forever. And um, the other thing was, is that as I grew older, 
the movie even started becoming more and more relevant because I started hearing stories from my friends as adults. You, we grew up in the most supportive environment you could think of in terms of just emotionally telling us we're good and we're great and you know mm -hmm. all of that. And I actually have um, friends who have uh, siblings of different parents and they were treated mark marked differently between each of them based on the mother's relationship with Ooh. the father and wow. so all even that was more real than i ever knew and wow. um and then and so and then at the end just like you talked about it just the punctuation of yes they're off at morehouse because at the end you know it says he's at morehouse she's at spelman mm-hmm but here's the thing, all of this is still here. Yep. So I just felt like it was so fitting that no, we don't go out on, they made it out, but we don't just go out two. on them in, in Atlanta. We, we don't, they, they no, don't get to be- this isn't a story of Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, this, is, they, they, this is a story, with, this is a story mm -hmm. of what's going on there. That's right, that's and right. Everything is right there. So I say all that to say, the emotion of this movie connected with me mm. was so, many different levels mm -hmm. um so many different levels and even um even being a young man in that situation like not I wasn't like Ricky but I was on a path of going to college and all that kind of stuff but I was adjacent to people who were not you know just and just I've been in those situations where like, cause when they approached him, when they approached him, the reason why Ricky got shot is because they were all just hanging out and some guy bumped him. Literally that's, that's what happened. That's what all of this is about because some, because they bumped each other. And, and so he, he bumped him on purpose. He bumped him on purpose. He bumped him on purpose. The guy bumped him. It was so, like, and so he now, unnecessary beef. For, and he wanted the no beef reason. that night and Ricky didn't give in to it. But, but, like, but, 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 even, but, even, but even think about how Ricky responded <sighs> though. Because if Ricky just completely backed down, it might not have been an escalation further, but think about the situation he's in. This is his environment. This is- this He is, can't look like a punk. That's no, what I'm saying. He so he's placed with this impossible decision where I believe if he could have really did what he wanted to do, he'd be like, man, I'm supposed to be in college in four months. I am walking away from here, you know? And so I'm just saying that movie emotionally connected with me. Now, mm. baby boy, I am open to hearing <laughs> what because you're not you're not finna good burger this movie no 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 <laughs> I, but, but well i mean but no but it, it is a situation in the sense that well first of all boys in the hood was a movie that just gave this this situation mm. baby boy i felt like it was trying to do something mm. more like like it was like try like, have either of you seen uh don't be a menace I saw it. I, after, after, I saw it, but after, I didn't. I didn't after understand we catch, it because I hadn't we, seen any of the other movies. After we catch you up on all of the, all of the, uh, you know, the all of the uh, the movies that you need to watch, we'll watch it again. Don't be a menace, but you know the one part. Don't wait. Be a don't minute. be a menace is the one with uh, what's his name? <clears throat> Keenan Ivory. It's the one. It, it's the Wayne. It's oh, you're. It's, oh, you're talking about the mocking one. Don't be a yeah, menace. Don't be while a menace. Okay. Don't be a menace to South Central. Drink gotcha. in the hood. Hood. Yeah. But you notice how that's so ridiculous. <laughs> so but you remember how the mailman kept popping up like message. <laughs> 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 Anytime they said something. <laughs> yes. That and like, is this. And there was those moments in Boys in the Hood where, like, you know, at the end, when Ice Cube said either they don't know, don't show. Or don't give a fuck about what's going I'm on. Sorry. Yep. You know? mm -hmm. And so that was a message moment, but you could see the conversation happening exactly the way it happened. Mm -hmm. So even though it was a message 
moment, it, it was still very natural. Mm-hmm. This one just felt like it was packed with the, like, see, see, this is what we're doing. This is, this, this is, a. Uh, that, uh, there's no father here. See, see, you know, it, it's like you know, he 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 hasn't learned. See, he's still, you know, he's he's spoiled. I see, think, well, I you think know part I mean? of and, that could have also been Tyrese's acting. Just and see. honestly, Brittany, I don't, and, I don't know, know, sis. That was the writing. And, and well, let me say this though, I've I agree with you both because most of the time, outside of Fast and Furious, I like Tyrese in Fast and Furious, but most of the time. I have a little issues with him. Do, 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 but I'm actually okay with that. Coca Cola has some great commercials. I, I, I don't care babies. what he ever does for the rest of his life. Yeah. That, that Every was... time I see him, I always think, listen, do, 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 sweet lady, would you be mine? <laughs> that okay. was some branding that they did that he ain't day. got the word. When, when Coca Cola had Tyrese. In the 80s on that bus singing that their song, that little and, 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 and that's the other reason why I just like Tyrese. Decades as a later, it's in my head. And Tyrese as a person, I feel like he got his moment and he smashed it. Yeah. And I just respect that because forever, so, you know, so many people when they get that one they don't know how to moment, parlay. They don't know what it, to do. You know, and so I I'm just saying that I, I agree with both of you. The, the, the acting sometimes is a little, and but <laughs> in addition to that, the writing, it just meandered. Like I didn't even know what the movie was about. I didn't know, they didn't even really introduce a protagonist until, um, for real, for real, because we didn't even know he was Shoot. coming home. Jody was we, the we protagonist. We didn't even know Roddy was. He was his, he own, was his own enemy, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and it was just. <laughs> And it was just like him just, I felt like everything that they communicated in the first hour and a half of the movie could have been done in like six minutes. I mean, because really, really we're just saying that he is a spoiled, uh, philandering, unproductive person. person. I mean, and we could have did that in one montage. That's right. You know, so just seeing that, that it, it just made the movie feel long that it just, kept repeating that over and over and, and over driving that longer. In, in, into the ground. And so at the end... And then watching that right after Boys in the Hood. That's the thing. It's like the combo. I don't yeah. know. I wonder if I might have had a different impression of Baby Boy if I had watched it by itself. But watching it after Boys in the Hood, which had was, was such a, a well-written story, to then have Baby Boy... It just, I just was, I was, I didn't, it was hard. It's so funny because I am like, do not feel that way at all. Sis, what did you, okay, what was it like? I just want to say this one last thing. I'm sorry, I just want to say this one last thing. Because there are movies about like a day, you know, like Friday or um, Clerks. Have you ever seen Clerks? Mm -mm. Clerks is a, it's a random movie that, I might get you guys to watch it. It's a cult movie, not a not a classic necessarily. Cult but, classics count. Cult classics count. Well, then it's it's something that we we could put, okay, put it on the list. But 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 what I'm saying is is that Friday was just about a day, but it was entertaining, and it, and it was like yes, this, this there's not a real thing happening in this movie other than you know he has to fight Debo, <laughs> but it was just an entertaining movie. So you could go along with it. And I'm just saying that the couple of times Baby Boy almost brought me in a little more. I was like, is this a comedy? Because if it's a comedy, I could maybe see it a little more. But then they would do some heinous stuff that, well, no, this is not a comedy. So, but um, anyway, so I just wanted to say that last thing about even though it's a movie that, I'm not saying it had to have this intricate plot, but it's just- sure. You know, but anyway, so that, that's how I felt. Well, what did you think, sis? You had a different experience watching them together? I did. Uh, Boys in the Hood, I had already seen bits and pieces of it, but re-watching it and actually, I think, concentrating, um, I did. I, I still appreciated it, but I think I appreciated it a little more. But it's funny, those message parts, right? I thought that it was funny, just kind of how randomly Lawrence Fishburne is like 
taking Ricky and well, Furious is taking Ricky and Trey to his name was Trey, right? Uh, to this billboard, and I was like, and everyone but walked. Have and you ever met nobody? Like everybody, that? but everybody walks up, and it's I was like, a, it felt was, real to me though, because dads that, that happens. No, dads no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not talking about him taking <laughs> them to the billboard. Soapboxes. No, I'm not talking about him taking them to the billboard. I'm talking about everybody walking up. I You've never, like, that's never happened. I'm just mm-hmm. not like not in real life. It's like that, that's happened to me talking several times. about this billboard, and then like strangers are crossing the street and old. <laughs> I was like, that happened, Joe. Well, that happened. I, I I just felt like that was a moment of cornballness. But <laughs> here's the thing: I felt like, wow. Boys in the Hood was it's what is the word is explicitly saying things, using the words and the terminology, gentrification, systematic racism, all these different things it was using. Um, Baby Boy was just showing it, like it was a movie about a young man who is having prolonged adolescence, and while people are around him are telling him you ain't nothing. You need to get your life together. No one is giving him any tools mm. <laughs> to mm. be better <laughs> and to go do. <laughs> so it's like, so, so at any rate, but I will tell you this, I, I walked away burdened from both movies mm. and I felt as if I had watched the wire again. I was like drained. I was drained. I was like, what? And I think I was also drained because I started thinking about these movies have informed a culture. Mm. While art is imitating reality, I wonder how much reality is imitating art right now. So that Jody Yvette relationship, that's love and hip hop. That's basketball wives. That's these shows that are out here right now. And these people are acting like this. Now they're getting paid for it. But this is, this, I was just like, did, did this help or hurt? Was this narrative that was told something that people were like, oh, I'll continue this thing. And it has created a whole nother monster uh, for us as a people. But at any rate, I, I enjoy both immensely. They are stories that I will say for me, what resonated more so for me was in baby boy because um i just think about black love Mm. and so much what has just come to destroy us uh in our community as a result of things that we do but also as a result of purposeful um internalized racism internalized hate just all these different things playing into narratives that Mm. are for our people like I just looked at that and I was, there was, there was this one particular scene where the mom uh, was stopping um, the boyfriend and Tyrese's character from fighting. And, and she's in the middle right now of these two men who are both walking around with hurt chips on their shoulders, um, still some growing that needs to be done, fighting demons, this is all happening right now in this moment. And she's having to make a choice between the man who has been treating her very well, but also made the mistake of growing weed in her yard and hits her son and throws him into a table. Uh, And her son, who is extremely childish and will not grow up on purpose, actually. It's not even like, he's trying hard to be a bum. Like, there's a... (laughs) You can get a job anywhere right now at this point, sir. You So he is just these things that he's doing. He's being enabled to do them. So just watching her in that scene, I literally, I felt a little sick. I was like, oh, this is too much. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a lot. So anyway, I enjoy both movies, but um, yeah, I, 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 but I felt deep deepness from I guess that's a word right I just felt something from the both of them but just in well, different ways for different things I, I I will say this so I you know I've already shared the baby boy for me I 
I, I was let down by the movie. I think I felt like the characters in, in Boys in the Hood were, um, I don't know. It's so interesting because I felt like they were somehow, they had better backstory implied or I don't know we, we the characters just seemed to me like they were more well-rounded and that's interesting because the uh because baby boy is 10 years later in Singleton's career but for some reason I felt like there were just a handful of, of nuances to each character that we were that were just being driven home so that I just struggled I just felt like the character development was not as good i don't know and then I, um... yeah, I i i think i think that that is undeniable yeah because because, <sighs> because the um first of all we actually got to see the the characters in boys and Hood as kids so just on that fact alone we got to see where it all started and we got to see that moment where um and I'm just saying, like, that there was a lot of that that I know I was able to relate with. Like, when I was, and I don't know how, I was growing at a certain point um, in my childhood, mom was giving me a shower, okay? And it was past the point that dad felt like she should be giving me a shower, right? And so he came in. It was like that—that's a man. You'll get, you know, like she's like, I want to make him make him smell good or or whatever. And he's like, you know, he need to learn how to, you know, he needs to learn how to how to take a shower. He's a man. And from that from that moment, it was it, the reason why I remember is because it was a very specific moment where it was. I, I've always had obviously close relationship with both my parents, but that was the time where it was like, dad was like, all right, now I'm going That's to- That's enough. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, do- I'm, I'm going to, I'm taking leadership in this category yeah. of, of this, of my son's development. Right, and, <laughs> and I'm just saying that, <laughs> yeah. so so th those types of moments, like mm -hmm. you've, I, you've experienced them, so it's not just them showing the characters, it's like, they're creating these situations that will emotionally, connect with you because yeah. even even i mean you all remember me hanging out with my friends all the time and stuff like that and like in in the church we would have friends from different backgrounds than, than we so you know i would go hang out with them and there's just times where you're just walking around and then all of a sudden this is a sketchy situation or like somebody I've never had nobody say you want to see a dead body, but that type of stuff all the time. Like, yo, let's go do something that you're like, you know, we know really you guys. Should, yeah. We should be doing something. <laughs> you know so, what? And this is, this is, this is, this is where two roads diverged in a yellow wood because I didn't have that. I, so that was the thing. I was like, <laughs> bro, when you were talking earlier about like randomly getting jumped, I was like, oh, because it's like, I somehow, I feel like I was insulated from a lot of it. About that? I, as you were saying it, it, it came back to me. Oh, okay. I remember now. But, I don't know, I don't know who don't But know. even, even in my, like, <laughs> even in my memory, it's, it was such a, uh, a uh, random experience. I didn't like. I don't feel like. Oh no, no, that's not. Had... That's not in your memory. That's what it was. <laughs> I, I felt like so. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a city that is so deeply segregated, or it was then. I haven't lived there in a long time, but it was so deeply uh, segregated. As someone who still lives, moved back, and has <laughs> been here for like back for like five they, years, they still keep none change. They still up. They still and none change. And so there were me, a let, handful. Let say, I, used, I used to think it was, but it ain't got nothing on Georgia. <laughs> there were a handful. Listen, of no, but it's clear there. It's clear there. Listen, it's it's clear in the South. I respect the South. Their racism <laughs> is clear. I'm walking around saying, with this Confederate flag. You. It's clear. Yeah, and Pittsburgh, it's they're like, I love you, but in, in the background, they hate you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> that's the best way like, to describe it. Like in terms it. of all their behaviors and actions and policies and procedures, they hate you. But they love you on but they're in messaging, 
they love you. They love but, you. But so there were a handful of neighborhoods that you would that we would probably call uh, racially diverse, not necessarily economically diverse, but racially diverse. And we grew up in one of those neighborhoods. And so listen, but trust that neighborhood was a walk over the bridge to literally, one bridge, literally. y'all. One little teeny little footbridge little away bridge. from the uh, black neighborhood that had no public resources, no barely any grocery stores, plagued with crime and violence and was very much a very different experience than we were having across on the other side of the footbridge. They had their Furiouses in there, but you didn't hear about Furious much. Right. So anyway, I just mentioned that to say, I <laughs> felt I felt like when I reflect billboard. on my childhood, I had an awareness that all of that was happening, but I also felt a little removed from it. I think our parents as strict as they were, they still gave us a lot of freedom and latitude to kind of become who we are. And um, I think that, you know, they never really chose our friends or anything like that. And so, and so I think your interests just that's just where they went. You know what I mean? Like you you were just in you were into school stuff all the time. You were you were always you were always running for something or and like me, I've joined one club the entire 12 years. <laughs> no, I joined two. I was in Nesby Juniors and I was in ski club. That's it. And both of those were largely social situations. And um also, I had a job in, in the neighborhood that we're talking about. So I worked with a lot of people who weren't in the same you know, neighborhood as me necessarily, but then we, grew, we became friends. Mm-hmm. And so then you just start hanging out with people. And the funny thing is, is that I've been in that furious situation several times, several times. And, that's what's interesting about it. Like when these movies can connect connect to people, but you can see how somebody else would miss it if they've never been in that situation. I get it. Because if you it's important though. Yeah, because if, if you've never seen that happen, but I'm telling you right now, let especially in the 90s, you gotta remember this is when we was walking around with black medallions on okay. at the same time. All Bro. The, all the craziness was going on. We still had cross colors. We still had. And you know, we weren't. We, had, we I, okay. it wasn't eyes and cell phones and. I know, had a, I had that. a dashiki, <laughs> and so you would see that. And there, it was a common occurrence to see some dude on the corner, you know, talking about something. Deep into it, truth. and Listen, then people just start. Bef- before you move from that point, that was. This is what has been swirling around in my mind now for one to Janiah's point we were also church kids and so I think some of that was it was rated r and I know a lot of that stuff came out when I was little so I knew I couldn't see it um but I was working at the library and I wouldn't see and it I because did... it would have been against the rules so I wouldn't have gone exactly you're right exactly. sis that's what it was so some of a part of that and then, <laughs> that sounds and right then... that sounds right that's tracks <laughs> now I did catch up on some stuff when I was working at the library and I used to get it out, but that's not the point. The point is y'all watch Modern Family. Modern Family? Janiya. Oh Jones. yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen every episode. Janiya, I was just gonna say Janiya reminds me. Of you don't have to say because, it. Why did you say it? <laughs> that's okay. Other She's point, a cool though. chick with a bright future. <laughs> <laughs> My other point is that. <laughs> You all were talking earlier about just the difference between he should have elevated by 10 years later. Excuse me. I was thinking to myself, the time frame was different. So we have had discussions about hip hop, right? And just how hip hop in the 80s, early 90s, it was completely different. All of a sudden, something happened late 90s, early 2000s to where we are right now. And so (laughs) I think about his movies going along with the tone of the culture. Mm. Whereas in the late eighties, early nineties, you could have had a moment where you have a furious walking up to a billboard. He's saying these different things, 
could it have resonated with early 2000s crowd? I don't know. I don't know. I think about just that time frame. People weren't walking around pro black. You know, this this is not not saying that there weren't those people, but that wasn't in the forefront as much as it was during that time. What was in the forefront was what you saw in Baby Boy. The you you saw the outfits, you saw the the hairstyles, you saw, you know how how people were. It was it looks very early two thousands, uh, and and that's when the movie was made. So it made me think about how, if you're playing to that type of audience, you didn't really need character development. You didn't need mm. so much backstory because that's just not what was really happening at that moment in those mm. type of movies. It was just a different vibe mm. of what was going in. So I feel like if if I look at it like that, I'm like, well, you did a good job playing to what the culture was looking at during that time, mm-hmm. you know, to, 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 yeah, to what the culture was having to happen in those moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't, I'm not going to say it's a bad movie. The way I felt was like, I just didn't get it. And I was, and the thing about it is, is that at that time, um, I was in the the prime of, like I would have been the target market, especially for that movie at that time. How old were you in 2001? In 2001, I was 22. Wait, yeah, 22. Yeah, so, so, um, so I'm just saying, even the fact that I, it was always something just about the name that just never grabbed me. Yeah. But but but, but I'm saying that the the biggest feeling that I got was that Boys in the Hood to me was is a masterpiece. Like that should be discussed with whatever other masterpieces are discussed. Like I feel like. <laughs> I'm well, serious. Now, whatever about it ma- won, it won about many awards. Yeah, like like what, it, I mean, it, I mean, I'm just watching it. Yeah. And even and even after I, I could pretty much say the movie by heart. And even after all this time, the only, I mean, there's no real weak parts of the movie to me. You know, some things were a little aged, a little like when Cuba Gooding uh, had his little. Temper tantrum in, in the that one didn't hit me like it did when I, you know. But in Don't Be a Menace, they just destroyed him on that scene because they redid that scene <laughs> and they just. And then, so rude. I can't wait she was to like, understand that. Movie. And she was like, <laughs> What are you doing? He was like, Trying to win an award. <laughs> Listen, I when I, I I did go see Don't Be a Menace, and I went with friends in the movie theater. Girl, you was the confused. The whole theater was cracking up I mean, the that, whole time, and I was there like. <laughs> I, mean, they, 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 I that, didn't that, get that, a lick of it. I had not seen any of the movies. That one part, that one part, they they because they also overlapped it with him dealing with a woman with a lot of kids. <laughs> and the thing is, the kids were from the room and he was knocking the kids out. It's so messed up. It was so messed up. And I, I just love Keaton Ivory Wayans. And I, and I, Keaton Ivory Wayans did not care. So, so, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, like, you all know Biggie, right? Biggie mm-hmm, Smalls. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was watching this documentary on Kwame, who was another rapper who was big back then. And Biggie just said, and Kwame used to wear polka dots. That was his, that was his one. And Biggie said, your style is play. Uh, um, hold on, uh, uh, I'm trying, let me, let me not, let me not misquote. Um, if you misquote. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going, but he, he dished Kwame. Um, uh, your style is played out like Kwame. And I don't want to cuss on the thing, but basically he dished Kwame's po- polka, polka dots. And the documentary was about how that one line changed the whole trajectory of Kwame's career, right? Because it's just like, sometimes somebody hits you with such a good zing, it's hard 
to kind of not see that. And I'm just saying, yeah. in that one scene, wow. they, they mocked it so good that maybe that's why I can't. But even, point, but even with that, it's just such a masterpiece. And I think that sometimes when you do something so good, it's hard to follow that up. And yeah. I know he's done many movies, but if we're talking about these, comparing these two things, especially when we're saying like one with a, a father, one without the father, we're seeing how it all played out. And I'm just saying it felt like, like I said, like he was trying, like he was trying to make this this thing because the subject matter would have still draw, drawn me in because there are people that even if we don't hang with them, we all know people like, um, those okay. characters are friends and family. Well, we know all of those people. Yeah, it, I, even in Baby Boy. Like we Absolutely, know, we, yeah, know yeah, we know all of those people. We are related to those yeah, people. We love but, those people. But he just, it, it just didn't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so I, and honestly, I, and the other thing about it is I wanted to like it. So, so like, I, yeah. I, like, I, was, I was coming in like, you know, that's why I was giving it even more chances than I normally you know what? Well, let I me... think that my perspective was watching how Black women have to deal with Black men. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is what resonated with me a sure. lot and just what's happened in our community in terms of that. So I think that I was more so, as I was watching the messaging or even just watching what incarceration does to someone into their life. Like Ving Rain's character, he didn't want to be that person, but you could see him trying to actively fight to be someone different. Mm-hmm. But then that old person can sneak back up on you without even knowing because you're so used to that person. Yes. Um, as I, so I don't so I see, I see what you're saying. I would not like. I wouldn't have watched these two movies together at all. Um, but I understand, but I think I just, I, in my mind, for, I'm just putting them in different categories and I'm, and I'm seeing them as both special in different categories, not together. Like, like two facets of John Singleton, just different ways of 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 seeing him like mm-hmm. I'm I'm not putting them together when, when I do it. <clears throat> well, let me let me tell you I as you know of course I have some notes here. Um, I had a couple of things from each of these movies like to me that I thought we should touch on, and we're hitting most of them. Um, like when we've been talking about the message moments, um, there I, I actually took some notes on that gentrification message that Furious gave on the, on the Mount, for, on his Sermon on the Mount. And I wanted to just read it out. Um, or this is roughly it, it's pretty close. He said, um, he was referring to in this neighborhood, there was one of those signs, cash for your home. And we see those signs all the time. I see them in my neighborhood right now in Brooklyn. And they're like, we buy houses cheap. You know, those kinds of signs. Oh, and they play it on the radio. It's every oh, other commercial oh. break. And, and, and Furious, again, his Sermon on the Mount, he's like, you know why they're doing this? He's like, it, it's gentrification. They bring the property value down, buy the land at a lower price, move all the people out, raise the property value, and then we can't afford to live there. Then we, we, we can't get back in. You know, and I wanted to just, I wanted to name, like, there was something in that to me. And Brittany, it's so funny that you highlighted it as like a a moment that was like, felt a little contrived for you. Because for me, I was like, how did he manage to explain the complexity of gentrification in like three to five sentences? I was like that to me, it was so well done. And I just, and I appreciated the way that it was inserted in the story. Um, And then he went on to say, um, you know, we, and he was talking about drugs. He said, we're not the people flying and floating the drugs here. 
We don't own any planes or boats. He said, and drugs weren't even a problem until they showed up on Wall Street. They give us gun stores and liquor stores in our neighborhoods because they want to kill us and they want us to kill ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and anyway, he just, he broke down so much of like the core system and, and, and I, if we, in like if we can, five if, sentences. But if we can think about like- See, this is exactly why, why I just don't think see, it's see, fair. See, I don't think see, it's see fair that we're comparing baby boy and- and this well, no, movie, I, I, because it's making Baby Boy look so bad. No, I'm, but it's I, like I it's not I think, bad. It's I, I'm not saying that. I don't think e either me and Janai are saying that Baby Boy is bad. I'm saying that it did make sense to me when you're talking about if you're comparing the experience of a per of a young boy who didn't have his father versus one who did, and I feel like that is a very marked comparison that you can make but what i'm saying is think about the writing in that moment because back then there's no social media right there's no way one of the things that is keeping everything the way it is, is that people are disjointed where are they these dudes aren't going anywhere that you could go get them talk to them all at once why because they're out in the corner so how, how do you ever even, the only way you're going to get to those dudes is if you just go out there and start talking. And then the other thing you have to know, if you're somebody who is um, as intelligent as furious, is that this can't be a long message. This can't be, like, I can't get into, I have a short amount of time. Yep. To, to drive home some points and that hopefully will hopefully, you'll, hopefully you'll take a will, little will, bit. Will duplicate. Yep. But what I'm saying is, so even the style of how he did it so was good. great writing because that's oh. that's how he would have had to do it. Mm -hmm. He would have had to come out because where else he going to talk to them? Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm just saying that these situations, like, I, I'm just saying, I... Don't, I'm not a movie writer, I, but I know the message that he was trying to, well, the message I feel like he was trying to portray in Baby Boy is that, you know, when, when you don't grow up with a uh, male influence and you're male, there are some possible, you know, or, or likely challenges you're gonna have. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in a lot of situations, and you're not going to truly be able to understand the full value of interacting with other people, I think. Because um, like growing up, uh, you know, dad, it was a daily conversation of how I need to honor you both and mom. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm telling you, I've been mad at a woman to the point where I've, I've never thought I would be mad before, but I've never called a woman out her name because it's just not in my programming. You know what I mean? To even, it, it just wouldn't come out like that. Like, yeah. it, it just, you know, it just, it just went. So I'm just saying, I can see how somebody would say the two the two movies are could be looked at. They're as, an interesting, but it's, and I understand set, the but. the message of both that they're trying to get across. But I just feel like it didn't connect with me, and and I feel like it could have, it could and, have. And bro, I have to just share a reaction. And I and listen. And again, we've we've been transparent about our childhood, but I take issue sometimes. It just rubs me a little bit of the wrong way when people say like. Um, whenever there's like a statement that 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 uh, people are like a, a person is so disadvantaged by not having a father in the home. I didn't say and, so. Well, I I know. So I'm just sharing a general statement. Okay, okay, okay. Not okay. necessarily completely in reaction to what you said. But okay, okay, I got you. It made you. me I think about you. this, and it's just that um, you know, I think what we're what what I hope people would think and say, my personal opinion is that you need balance in every aspect of life. And so when it comes to the rearing of a child, 
the male perspective and the female perspective are important. And I think like, um, I think people, I think you have a responsibility as a parent to make sure that your child has a balanced set of perspectives as they're growing up. Does that person have to be in the home with the child? Do all those perspectives need to be in the home? I think that's ideal if that can work out like that, but life ain't always like that. And in some cases, um, you know, just having the father there is not enough. I mean, what we saw in Furious was an engaged father and a father that happened to have very clear, clear ideals that were about empowerment of people and, and, you know, strengthening black men. And so that's not every father. And I, anyway, so this was a father can we, that can had we, can we, can we, a can, high ability to add can we value. Go, can we go deep on it? Please can we go, do. Can we go deep on it? If we're, if we're, okay. Well, I, Janai and I literally love to do that for every movie. But um, I, I'll say that. <laughs> Okay, I grew up with an example of this balance that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I, because of the balance, I know it's dramatically impacted how I interact with women. I know it's dramatically impacted, obviously, every aspect of my life. But I know that had I not had my father there, I would have accomplished less, probably no matter what mom would have did. And the reason why is this, I remember the last spanking I got from mom. And I don't know if I ever told y'all about it, but it was when we lived on, on me, I'm in middle school. And you know, by now I'm already, you know, I'm taller and bigger than mom at, you know, age 12 or something. And I did something to warrant her wanting to give me a spanking. And so she pulled me all the way down to the garage and she proceeded to attempt to give me a spanking. And I was just like, this just doesn't hurt. And, and I, I know we could talk about corporal punishment and all that I kind of know. Stuff. I was about but, to but, say but, spanking, but, that's a whole other thing. That, I'm saying that's, that's like a, we can we just say that's a conversation we could have yeah. separate. I'm gonna but, 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 purposefully pick a movie where but, a parent spanks a child so that we can have this conversation because the world needs to know that it's dumb from okay, my perspective. Well, spanking, but stop the, but doing the, it, people. I'm just trying to explain from uh from me being a boy. There, she couldn't have guided me. It, it, it just it, by herself. And not only that, moms and sons have a, have a relationship just like dads and dads and and, and uh, daughters. And so y'all know how mom will do anything that I ask. So can you imagine if I'm growing up in that environment? You know what I'm saying? Where Absolutely. I, you, you know, so I'm just saying that, yes, there's exceptions to every rule. I, and, and yes, there are bad fathers and all this kind of stuff. But I'm just saying that. We, but I think we have an, a responsibility to always hold that nuance. You know, I think it, it's impossible to not speak in general terms. But I just think there are some things we're making statements about Black men and about the Black community that I just want us to hold nuance, you know, because I just think that um, the things that have been articulated as ideal are also the things that the, all the systems make it hard for us to have. And so I just, I just, I just want to always name that we just need to hold some nuance. That's all. That's all, bro. I mean, I, I, but I get you. I mean, we have to speak in general terms. It's mm -hmm. just, if it's just hard for me to hear sometimes. I know? mean, you know, it, it's a, um, and I, I get what you're saying because it's, it's, it's a horrible situation. I mean, to even, I mean, you, we can't even really 
talk to the enormity of it. Yeah. Um, and so I guess when I'm talking about it and, I, and I'm careful with my language because I said, you know, when we were talking about it, I was like, these are things that in certain circumstances make it more difficult because there are um, um, pe people and men and, wo and women who come out of single parent for homes with no problems, you know, mm -hmm. saying both ways, but both ways. So like, I would never not say that, I, but I think more what I'm talking about is from a, a fact of what I've seen yep. in my, in my experience and in my experience with my friends and like seeing that if I had to choose, because I know, I also know this, if I didn't have mom, my interactions with women wouldn't be as good. So uh, for, in my opinion, they wouldn't be, in my, in my opinion, my interactions with women wouldn't be, because that relationship developed how I interact with women, right? Yeah. But but if I had to choose, I would have chosen to be in the circumstance where I would have accomplished more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because... Well because I have, I have friends on that side too, you know, on, on all of it. So when I'm speaking to it, I'm just speaking from what I've observed, but the conversation of why we're there, which what you're saying is there should never be a point where those are not coupled. Right. So I, well, get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Oh gosh, I feel like we could do a whole podcast. Oh yeah, I mean, topic. of course, of course. Well, I have another one of those moments that was like a sermon on the mount moment, and it was actually in Baby Boy, and it is when Sweet Pea and Jody are, you know, being sweet, <laughs> being Meandering. Sweet Pea and Jody. Okay, and then. Melvin, who is Jody's mom's boyfriend, he is a formerly incarcerated person that now has a thriving business. He he is like working hard not to get his third strike. I think he said something about two strikes or something at some point. Was it? I think it was him that said that. Mm -hmm. um, but he gave a speech about guns and butter. And I want to kind of uh, poorly recite some of what he said <laughs> and then <laughs> offer that into discussion. He said, there are two types of guys in the world. And, he, and his framing for this was, you young guys don't see that you're, you're focused incorrectly. He was basically saying, your youthful perspective has your energies misdirected. He didn't use these words, I'm paraphrasing. But then what he did say was, there are two types of guys in the world. He was like, you got your guns and you got your butter." He was like, the guy with the guys with guns, they are thinking about real estate. No, the gun. He said there. Are, he said there are guns. assets. They're, assets. They're basically okay. assets. Two assets. They're, they're, types they're, they're, of they're, assets. They're, yeah, guns they're looking and butter. For assets that add value. If the, if the people, the guys who are looking for guns are looking for real estate, stocks and bonds, art, things that appreciate in value, and the guys that are focused on butter. Are, are looking for things that don't mean anything after you buy them, like cars, clothes, jewelry. And it was just so interesting, number one, that he used guns to qualify the thing that appreciates in value. Um, but I appreciated butter because what does it do? It just melts away. And frankly, it gives you, um, you know, it contributes to obesity. But anyway, um, <laughs> I just thought that was so profound though about how he was basically saying it's a youthful perspective to want things that are shiny, like cars and clothes and jewelry. And um, that the right thing to be focused on is building, finding things that appreciate and value. And he was like, real estate, stocks and bonds, art. And you're just thinking, man, drop that knowledge on them, Melvin. Drop that knowledge. See, that's what I, I think, this is why I understand. Of course, I understand why, why comparing the movie but this is why I also think it's a disservice to compare the movies is because the audience of the movies are different. They're the same, but they're different. And how he was talking to them, someone may not receive it as how it was maybe said in Boys in the Hood, but how he said it 
and baby boy, it could have been received. Oh no! So, I, I, well, well, the 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 thing was is that that was a great. I received. Moment. I received that, both of those messages. Me too. And that was a great. Well, no, moment. I'm not saying that you didn't. What I'm just saying is that sometimes there's an audience for certain perspectives. That's all. That's all I'm saying in that in that avenue under that what he was saying. But I appreciate Melvin's character just because it was showing someone who wasn't perfect. But it was showing someone who I've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. I've been there, done that, and that yeah, life and doesn't lead to tell anything, you. right? Man, except man, for man. being in jail. Like, don't stop. Like, just stop. Like, stop. Go do well, something. Well, I'm gonna tell you that that was a moment that I felt like was a missed opportunity because that was such a good scene. It was, and it would have been Ving Rhames so, is an amazing actor. It would have been oh, so interesting to see killed it whoever uh, whatever the baby boy's name is. Tyrese. But, t- Jody. <laughs> Listen, y'all know I'm gonna yeah, Jody. Been, it would, Jody and Sweet Pea. It would have been, I feel like that would have been a good payoff to see through Jody's experience, see him come to the realization of this lesson that he was just trying to give him and i don't feel like we ever got that it was it was we never did not. that was not and that's what i'm saying there was the, but that's but the, that's the part of i think that the movie is not being given enough credit where we're not thinking about the nuance of jody and the fact that he was raised by a young single mom his older brother is dead no, no, what, what, is, listen, what, what I'm well, saying is... I'm just saying I'm, that my point is that I don't think that we're given enough... We're, we've talked about the nuance of Boys in the Hood, but we have not talked about the nuance well, of do Baby it, Boy. Well, do, do it. it. That's what I'm asking. I'm saying I don't see where, what... What I was saying is... Well, I'm, in, I'm talking about new, but you know. In, in that, in that <laughs> what I would like to... Do it, sis. No, go ahead, bro. Finish what you were saying. I'm just saying I would like to see what I, the, what I was talking about was that was a lesson and I would have liked to see that manifest. That's what I wish to. And it's like, I wish Jody and, and, took and, the and, and so you're saying that that happened. I'm just, that's what. But yeah. see, I feel like it started manifesting in his life, but in a way that just may not have been as clear for some people. So he knew he needed to start doing something. When he stood up on the thing and he was making that speech, there are transactions happening everywhere around us. He was beginning to have some sort of clarity that I need to be a business person. In the wrong way, because he was still in close. But his mind was like, I need to start doing this thing. I Now, part of me wished, okay, he would have gone and started working with Melvin in his company. And, and started doing landscaping and all those different things. But it's like, that wasn't his journey. But, his but, journey was still being enabled, right? His journey was still by these many women in his community. <laughs> so, But I'm right. thinking about the nuance of, again, going back to that, of how he was raised, right? So he's raised by a young single mom. His father was a thug, she said that. His brother has already been killed once he moved out the house. His mother has been in abusive relationships. He was afraid that Melvin was an abusive person. So I'm halfway listening to you because you just got out of jail. You're you're an old thug. Mom, why are you always with these thugs? And then his fear of dying and being kicked out the house and all these different things going on in the back of in the back of his mind and also him making that statement to his mom you're telling me to grow up and get out you never grow up, you never move out of your mom's house this is your mom's house you've been in your mom's house your whole life and so i'm i'm thinking of his perspective is like why would i go i'm just doing the same thing that you did but i also want to keep you away from these guys but see she had to have a grown man conversation with him to say listen what you're doing is what your father did to me. But so though I think that we're not getting into Jody having to have these pieces, these bits and pieces of moments to, to see 
what what was mm-hmm. what was going on with his life and why he was acting I'm not saying that he should stay like that but I'm just saying the reasons why he was acting the way that he was acting well what I'm saying is is that what makes good writing in a movie is character arcs I'm not talking about what you know his his motivations and all that I'm saying in the beginning of Boys in the Hood um, Furious said to Trey, he was talking about the them across the street. He was like, you're going to see how they're going to end up. That was the seed. We went through the whole journey. And at the end, they were both dead. So that was the payoff. So I'm just talking about writing. If we're talking about, okay, um, Jody was the reason why, when he started um, noticing the people hustling, that once he started making money from selling the clothes, he was buying the Dayton's. He was buying the, you know, the, 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 butter, stuff, that, the, the stuff that didn't matter. That's the, that's the beginning of the art. Then he, we had this lesson, which was don't focus on that. Focus on what's real. And for me, just in terms of writing, the next thing you want to see is that lesson manifest in his life so that it's punctuated like, and at some point you don't even got to say it verbally, but you can see the connect in his head like. And frankly, I would have taken with baby boy, I would have taken at the end of the movie, a uh, two seconds in a montage just to see some progress because what, so what it's just, bro, bro, you said a lot when you talked about character art. Cause I think that's, that's what, that's what was missing for me. Absolutely. It was, it was, I thought they, the in baby boy they did do i thought john singleton did a very good job of helping us to to start to make a guess as to why jody was why certain cycles were playing out in his life his mom was clearly 16 when she had him he already has two kids by the time he's 20 um his mother had in front of him as britney said cycles of bad relationships he's a man that is you know perpetrating bad relate like he's he's really, really a bad partner to the women in his life in every single way. And it's the men that he's seen and his mom's like, so I think we did a, they did a good job of showing us why he was the way he was to bring yeah. this point. But what they didn't do was like yeah. have him evolve. I mean, even at the end, after he had his wake up call of, you know, participating in a murder, he, um, he still, the only thing that changed, I mean, it was so unfortunate throughout the whole movie, he was driving his girlfriend's car and acting like it was his at the end of the movie, he's still driving her car, you know, at, you and it know, still got the Dayton's on it. It still has the Dayton's on it. And then, um, then we, we don't even get to see if he has actual employment or an entrepreneurial inclination at the end. We don't and she's to, pregnant again, which is not necessarily, again. it's not necessarily a good thing. At all, because when we first met her, she was coming out of an abortion clinic and apparently she had been pregnant many times by him. And we watched him over the course of this whole movie treat her so poorly. Jody treated Yvette in the worst possible ways. When I say he said horrible things to her, he disrespected her, he took her love for granted, he used her money, her resources, um, you know, and he did all of this in front of his son. And at the end, they're together. That also, I also struggle with that because in addition to Jody not learning a lesson, Yvette doesn't learn a lesson. If anything, Baby boy drives home that broken, sick message of the ride or die chick that just stays with a guy no matter what. No matter what, let him hit you, forgive him. Let him cheat on you to the point of having an actual baby with another person, forgive him. Let him use your money, forgive him because he loves you. And just stay because eventually, if you just stay for years and years and years and years and years and years and years, eventually you will get something out of it and you'll, and, and, and love will pay off. And And you're right, and you're right, sis, because even though I I was so frustrated that he still had that, even, even him losing that relationship would have been a, uh, it would have been a little bit more of an arc 
because it would have been him at least having a consequence. Well, and that was that was the other something. thing. That, it's that not was progress. That, that a was the other thing. When when, when when a when a, the characters start and end at the same places. That's what it was. It's like what, what did we just because I, it wouldn't have took much. What if he was just driving a sensible car to a little house? That's all. I mean, honestly, and, and they were walking into tag, a house. A you know, they tag. were walking into a, or something. To, a name tag. If he was been walking in the, into a, a business licensing office for like an entrepreneurial idea, anything. But it's they, so they, crazy because I was like, she was pregnant and had on a wedding ring. Like, but they're in the I'm, same and, apartment. But see, but that's the that's what I'm thinking of though. Like. He's Why 20. Did she marry him? He's 20. But but bro, but but sis. And also she is 20. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like but what she these do? are these are babies that you're talking what? about right now. Like these are kids. Sis. They're what, 21, what? 22. And I am not, you already know. Let's be clear. You already know how I feel about that type of foolishness being in a toxic relationship. Don't nobody have time for that. I'm not saying I am not promoting that at all. Honey, if you are in a toxic relationship, you need to go. And so there's too many people out here on this planet, okay? Trillions of them, let's be clear. So do not stay in one. But what I am saying for this story, for their life, for what she knew, because we don't know Yvette's story. We don't, you know, we don't know all the things about That's her. another problem um, with the movie. With the movie, yeah. That, but, but that we didn't, it, it wasn't even like, we all we backstory. know of yeah. Yvette all we know of Yvette is that she was lovesick for an abusive man, a man that mentally it's, and emotionally and then and, and then physically abused it's her. It's so crazy to me because we didn't even, it's like l- talking about like heaven and hell right now between boys in the hood and baby boy. Like that's why I, we should have never done these movies together because I just don't think, even though baby boy has like this not super awesome situation, it is still not being given enough credit for and what sis, it was. I, I just, I can't disagree with you more because like what I was just sharing was about baby boy. I didn't say, I didn't compare it to boys yeah, in the we're, hood. We're not I am, I am giving that, my last comment was a critique about the character arc for baby, for Jody in that movie. That's what I'm talking about. It's not in comparison to nothing in particular. It was what I wished for him, which was to see progress or a consequence, something. He didn't have either. And, and then for Yvette, if anything, I mean, boy, when it, when it, it, it is no progress. If anything, she went backwards because she further entrenched herself into this relationship with this man that made no progress. And that was even, visible even, to even us. If, even if they would have showed for for even if they would have showed some type of revelation that he had and then he had to somehow prove himself to her so that you're learning the lesson and building value in her at the same time Mm -hmm. and even if they didn't show physical consequences they could have showed emotional consequences because like he, I mean, he participated in killing somebody and like there was just. And he's in a park romping the next. It, it, it's just like nothing him. ever it's happened. Like, you know, I, it's I, just, it's just like, <laughs> well, you know, I, I felt bad for a few minutes and, and now we've moved on. You know what I mean? It's like, what, like, so what, cause even in like when, when you're talking about movies that hit hard, it's like when they show you that, look, you don't escape certain consequences, no matter what. You know That's what I mean? The truth of life. It's like it's, it's it's like, and through these consequences, you learn lessons, and then you end up in a different place than when you started. Because I'm gonna tell you this: yes, they showed her pregnant with the ring, right? But I could give a very easy story. He knocked her up again to keep her, and he never really proposed, but he gave her a ring to get, to keep other guys away. And, Which and, is stuff that people do. And, and throughout, but throughout, throughout also, the movie, throughout the movie, we had seen moments of sweetness. Tiger. But huh? throughout the movie, we saw moments of sweetness between Jody and Well, listen, and I be and again, I need to make sure I'm clear again. I'm not saying that they had a healthy relationship. I am no, not saying not. that at all. Of no, course you're not. not. No one no, could. 
Of course, of course you're not. They was <laughs> awful. No, but that's but, the thing, though. There are many people who would say that their relationship was a good one. And that's the part of the nuance of the things that we never grew up with and that we don't understand. There are people that will be okay with what happened in that movie and think that it ended fine. Well, well listen, I, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about the goodness or badness of a relationship. I'm saying it ended up in the same place that it started. In terms so, of telling a story. In terms of telling a in story. In terms of telling See, a that's, story, that's what it's I'm like, what about. happened? Yeah, it's what like, happened? We'll, it's like, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like the I just, stories, like, even when I was just writing up the yeah. recap, I couldn't finish the, I didn't have a last paragraph. And that's yeah. why I was like, well, he was alive. Uh, because it was just kind of like, he just continued to exist in the reality that we had seen him in the whole time. There was no evolution. And, and, and for us to think about, so much but just like you guys were imagining why couldn't you have imagined that he had a job and maybe you just could they have to give you enough so that you can but that's what i'm saying why could you have imagined that he had a job like just when you were imagining that they were just i mean oh no 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 no. i could i could i could imagine that as well but what i'm saying is this their job to give us give us a little closure that that's that's their job that's what that's what makes a good movie when you you like i don't want to sometimes an ambiguous ending is good based on what what the story was but in this story what happened like 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 he, like, moved, he moved out of his mom's house into his girlfriend's house i mean he moved he went from <laughs> you know what honestly if they had just showed the two like no we can stop talking about if it they had just show, if they had just showed the two of them moving let, into a new apartment <laughs> you know what i mean if they had just showed the two of them moving into a which new is apartment, not reality they're 22 that, that they have, have gone they have, a long way they're 22 one child they're pregnant that's just not they're in the hood he's just getting a job like it's just not reality well they're let me say one this. more thing on, on this piece about baby boy you know when I was watching it and feeling so frustrated, I had to say to myself, this storyline of a man that is stunted is plays out all the time in white movies. And so in the recap of Baby Boy, I intentionally used failure to launch as a phrase to describe him because there's a movie called Failure to Launch and it's about a man who stunted. And I started thinking of other ones. You know, there, listen, there are so many movies, every Adam Sandler movie, you know, there's so <laughs> many movies where the They're main storyline, oh, come on, the Will Ferrell movies, there are so many movies Wedding where crashers. the storyline, oh, that was the one. And we love it. But why do we love it? Because at the end, somebody has a revelation or a consequence. And so I just feel like even when I let go of the fact that this was a black man that didn't make any visible progress, because, it, you know, because again, it was like that stunted man thing is a storyline white movies do all the time, all the time to big box office dollars. But those movies, at least something happens at the end where the character has a revelation or they are, or the shit hits the fan, something. And we didn't get that. So I, I'm not even, I, I mean- I, 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 I literally don't know how I would describe this movie to somebody. It was hard so, to read so, so like if, it So if I was say, like, if I was talking about wedding crashers, I could say, well, it's a movie about these two guys who crash weddings and they go there, pretend like they're part of the family so that they can sleep with women. Along the way, they ended up falling in love, realizing that what they're doing is fruitless and they ended up with their, you know, I could tell what happened. Right, something like happened, I, I, there I, was an evolution. I, I don't know what I would say it's but bro can i i will say on the so again i i actually think that the character that had the best arc in the movie was jody's mom and i'll she tell you why she had a good arc over the course and of she, the movie, she did a good job acting too she really no, did did y'all recognize her from house party which is oh i recognize her do. and also she's i think a fitness guru like i feel like she's I know her in many ways. I think she's a dancer and she does fitness stuff. But 
her character, we learned her backstory. We learned her backstory that we were able to do the math to see that she was 16 when she had him. We learned her backstory that she never moved out of her mother's house. We learned her backstory that her mother had taught her, her mother and father gardened. And that now that she was grown, part of the way that she was honoring them was to garden in the way that she that they gardened. And we saw her saying, she actually said out loud, like, listen, I'm putting this little table and this little chair in this garden for myself because I've been working hard for other people. And now I'm at a stage in my life where I want something for me and I want time for me. We watched her having, from what we can tell, a, a relatively healthy relationship. And frankly, the tensions that existed in her relationship were because of Jody. It wasn't because of anything that actually happened organically between her and her man. So and then to we the got extent, to see her let him go because of it. There you go. And she- Which is another major thing. She, she, she was able to say to her son, listen, I am owning my part in who you are right now, but I'm also giving you a challenge to evolve. And out of all the characters, I think she's the only one that had a beginning, a middle, and then like a, an actual kind of full story. Yeah, she, she, she did have a great arc because um, not only uh, did she go through these things, but I think she acted it really well. Yeah. Like when when, when um, the jail dude and Jody were fighting, mm -hmm. you could see in her face like this is an impossible situation right mm -hmm. here. Like I know my son is tripping, and he's tripping. The, the jail guy is tripping too a little bit, but he pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. What is he gonna do? Right. Right? You know what I mean like eventually and you could just see her going through that emotion that like even when he even when the son was saying those spoiled things that are supposed to uh you know like like he said something about he was putting the responsibility on her mm -hmm. and it was a moment that she normally moms normally would have accepted that in some way mm -hmm. but she pushed it back like, no, this responsibility is yours. Mm. And that was, a, I feel like a great moment. So yeah, you're, you're yeah, right. And she, the way she, she, had, a great she, she had a great She was dropping nuggets. Art. She was dropping nuggets to the baby mamas, you know, about what it meant to be realistic about expectations in a relationship. I, she was dropping knowledge on Yvette and she, she, she basically said, listen, you need to learn. She's talking to her, her son's, on again, off again, girlfriend. And she's saying to her, listen, you have to learn how to evaluate your relationship. I'm paraphrasing. You have to learn how to evaluate your relationships. She says, if you are losing, if you're netting a loss in terms of emotion and in terms of care and respect, get out, get out. You know, she was basically saying, look at your relationship with Jody. You are netting a loss here. So she was even giving her wisdom she, so that character, I got to say, I hope, she, I hope she won something um, because I thought that character was not only well-written, but to your point, bro, well-portrayed. I have a question specifically for you though, sis, um, because there was <clears throat> something you said to me. Uh, you've said it a couple of times, but it's been in like the last couple of years um, that you had heard from an expert about people playing out it, trauma that they experience. It was something you said one time, like if a person experienced significant trauma at the age of 12, then they continue to have that trauma play out in their lives until they get past it or something. Do you remember saying that to me? Mm -hmm. Can you, can you drop that nugget for us and just like share that knowledge? I just, it, it hit me, especially well, I mean, in relationship to baby boy. Well, I don't, I, well, that's really it. Like what you said is it in a nutshell, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. wherever you are, like you're stuck there until you work that out. So, mm -hmm. you know, but it's to say that would go against anything you all were just saying about him because he's still well, stuck Well, he there. didn't, but, but his he, mom did. Still, his mom right. did. His mom oh, okay. Did. I was about to say that the baby is still a baby boy. But, but he, right. So, you know. But it speaks to his explanation. Which I will tell you, you guys, I just, I am struggling because I just feel like y'all are not giving that poor baby any credit for just at least not for moving in try. with his girlfriend there are so many people that do it like i 
but he's making strides in a way that he thought he could. Like he was doing things that he thought were better. So you, for so, him. so you feel like there was a a movie's worth of progression between him at the beginning and him at the end. I wouldn't say a whole movie's worth, but I would say his mindset started to be in a better direction. I wouldn't say that. Well, yeah, I mean, if this if this so, movie but... was was reduced down to a like a twelve minute montage. <laughs> we still we still wouldn't but, have the last but, frame because but, like but, but look let me get, I, I know we're about about, to I don't up, I was about to say things. I don't want to labor any more on baby boy because this there, just there, sounds there, terrible. There are, two, there are two more things Let's I, talk about I just want I just wanted to say Brittany we only have two topics I hate to break it to you it's boys <laughs> in the hood and baby boy we let's don't have back, any let's other go back topic. to boys in the hood so we can talk about the boys mama let's talk about I just want I just want to talk Angela Bassett. That was not dope I just want to talk about two more things oh. real quick. Oh, I want to mention two more things from <laughs> um, from Baby Boy that uh, also threw me off was the tone of the movie, meaning that there were moments in that movie that sh- could have been in Friday, right? It could, there I were moments seen in that, Friday. Well, there were moments in the movie that are straight up comedy. Like, oh, okay. Like hood movie comedy. And then in the same movie, they got attempted rape in front of a little boy. Oh, like and, and I'm just saying, and I'm just saying that is a big variance of movies that have attempted rape or not comedies generally. And the other thing is, is that even wow, though that's a really good point, and, and the, the, this was another part I felt like was missing that we're talking about the whole thing we're talking about is the relationship between parents and children and they never got into the relationship between him and his kids and if anything all his Whoa. kids are are just people who cheerlead for him when he get there I love my daddy I love my daddy which is showing like um I'm just saying there's no consequences even in the relationship that he has with his uh, with his kids. So we talked about a lot, but those were just two of my little notes. Yeah, that I just it's true. It's true because I felt I movie. felt the children were used as devices more than they were characters. So like his son, his role, like his contribution really to the movie was for us to see Jody's behaviors looking a lot like the behaviors that he saw his mother's boyfriends have. And so it's like his son is seeing the same thing he saw. And See, so that's the, that's the parts of the movie that I really wanted to highlight. Like these different things, how this generational awfulness can continue without people even knowing it. And I think that that was a huge part of the movie that we're not giving it credit for. That we don't, what, what brought Jody's mother to dating a thug? Because she talks about her parents gardening. What took her to a place in her parents' relationship that she messed with someone that was not a, a, a super awesome human? That was who she well, said well, they, like well, Jody. Well, we agree. They show other her, people. They and, show her arc, just nobody else. But right, but so, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like there are just places, or even where Wheat P had a little bit of an arc too, because he went um, and got saved. Right. The. The other part of it is um, thinking about how Melvin's character was basically like, y'all young kids, y'all don't respect anybody. And that is also what uh, Sweet Pea and Jody were saying to the young boys that robbed Jody. Mm -hmm. was basically, y'all don't respect your elders. And so I, I think that while there wasn't, you know, awesome character development and those different things, I think there are still some pieces that of the movie that are are not being given enough credit um, for what they were. I I, I just I, I feel like that like that's not there. We're not saying it's super awesome. I already talked about Tyrese's acting. You know, just all, all those different things. But there were still just some parts of the movie that were that were nuanced. And I know for me. Black, because I that scene that you talked about, bro. I had talked about that in the beginning of the podcast because it really destroyed me when I was watching her having to choose 
And I often think about for Black women when we are dating and when we're seeking out a partner, there because of the way systems have been set up, there's often times where how, how you're, you're trying to make a choice in your neighborhood if, if that's where you're limited to, right? Like Yvette right now is limited to that neighborhood. What if that whoever he became at the end of the movie was the best that she could have? Like, and, 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 mm. and I don't know. The, and, and, it, and it's so, so it's these things that are so far out of my mind, the just because in my mind, someone like a Jody would have never even gotten my area code on my phone number. So it, even though we would have the same area code, he would have not even gotten that. But it is so far from my mind, it doesn't mean that it's not so far from someone else's. So, I mean, and, and again, and I, and I agree with you guys in terms of like, there's not, I wish we could have learned more about Yvette because we would have known why she was like that, but we saw her friend. And she was sucking her thumb. She was sucking her thumb. That's that was another thing. That went unexplained. They didn't there give us a, any understanding of it. They didn't deal with it. And while we talked about how awful he was to Yvette, Yvette wasn't good to him either. They were, were bad to each other. You should never hit a person. Ever. Period. And she used to hit him. I, and so, and I'm, so I'm just saying like there, these, these are two toxic people that were together in this relationship that both had growing up to do that, that they didn't. But I know oftentimes- yeah, I, guess we'll just... see, I guess we'll see that in the sequel. <laughs> well, I, um, I wanted yes, to- Yes, I'm so happy we got a neat bow of a sentence at the end of Boys in the Hood. You know, and the other thing we didn't really speak about in terms of John Singleton's conventions that he used in this movie is that he did use statistics and important quotes at the top and and bottom, um, I think at the top of both of the movies. At the top of Boys in the Hood, he shared some st statistics about um, murder and the, the frequency of murder of Black men. And at the top of Baby Boy, he cited the ISIS papers, or, or at least the expert who is the author of the ISIS papers. Um, the ISIS papers, the keys to the colors. It's a collection of essays by Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, a physician specializing in general and child psychiatry, focusing on the global system of white supremacy and strategies for coping with racism in modern society. It's one of those books that is like an essential part of a library if you are doing work to be anti-racist. And so, and it's one of, I had heard of it many times. I finally ordered it actually as a result of it being cited in Baby Boy. Um, another thing that they did before in Baby Boy. Before you get mm -hmm. off that, have, mm -hmm. it, have either of you ever heard a black man refer to his woman as mama? You mama? Have? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. What's, oh, up, yeah. What's up, ma? Like that's all the time. What's up, Ma? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, and frankly, Atlanta. yeah, some of my, <laughs> some of my, I mean, literally, that's the soundtrack of my walk down some New York streets. It's people calling me Mama. So it's a little Mama. Yes, yeah, totally. It's, it's, it's all the time, and I think that also part of even in how in Boys in the Hood, how he's being raised by his father, he's still making poor decisions. He peer pressured his girlfriend into having sex with him. After he went in there and was fighting the air oh, and then she had there. sex with him. And so <laughs> he was, that was, that was, you know, I think that that's something that we didn't talk about. We didn't get into. And even her having to, where you been? Why haven't you called me? And him playing stalemate because she wouldn't have sex with him. These are, this is still a boy who's being raised by his father. So I think that we need to make sure that we make that clear. It doesn't, you make choices. You're given these things, but you make choices to be the person that you decide to be. And, and, and you, so I think that that has to be, because even when his father took the gun from him, what did he do? Climb out the window, get in the car with Doughboy and the two friends. But eventually... His mind said, let me get up out of this car. 
I'm about to die. Like he got out the car. I'm about to be an accessory to some I don't need to be. This is not me. But he has That's to it. have those moments this, of clarity. Would you, would you would you agree though that and again, I, I I as you know, I take issue with a statement that says a person turns out perfect or bet you know, absolutely better because of a set of parents, you know. But but I think like Trey, if you were just to talk about him in general mm-hmm. from Boys in the Hood, you would say that was a good kid because you would say he was trying. If you were talking about Jody overall, you would say that's a schmuck. Yes, and so, I agree with you. And and the other and so by the end, we see that Trey has experienced consequences, and we've seen him evolve. And with Jody, he didn't have either of those. So that's the thing. Since I I I was never saying that Trey was a a, a, a teen who didn't make teen type decisions if anything they 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 made we fell in love with those characters because we got to see the fullness of their teamness you know they're they're walking around their little block color shirts and their little (laughs) jury jury curls and um and box haircuts thinking they cute you're not cute you just got your driver like get over yourself but if they were very much high school boys but we got to like get to know them in a way that we could we were on a journey with them. And then with Jody, we got on the journey and we didn't go nowhere. That was the thing. So I I, I don't, I and, don't, I, and, and I'm, I'm not, and, and I don't want to compare them, mm-hmm. but just in the way that you framed it, sis, in terms of us not saying something about Trey, I don't think that we've mischaracterized Trey, mischaracterized Trey in the earlier parts of this podcast by saying that he was basically a good kid, you know, ma- trying. He was trying to make good choices. And we didn't see Jody trying to make good choices. Yeah, and, I, and, and, and um, that's another interesting thing that, you know, you got to like the protagonist on some level. And man, that Jody is just a bad guy, boy. I didn't <laughs> but dislike was, but him. But what is so I didn't funny like him. is just... that so many men would watch a Jody and not realize that they're Jody. There's oh, you! So I know. Many of oh, them. I know you. There's right. so many of men oh, yeah. who would corporate men who would watch absolutely Jody and go, "I'm nothing like him. I don't live in my mama's house." But you're just as trash. Yep. And so that 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 is the 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 other part of it as well. I wish I had we'll, a tambourine. We'll know what happened whenever what's his name Trey and his girlfriend went off to Morehouse and Spelman. I, who knows? Then that was doing Freak Me. So who knows what they went and did while they were down in Atlanta? So I, well, I mean, we're, we're not we're not going to know anything after the end of any movie. the The question is is have we moved somewhere during the movie? That's the question. I mean, we're you know we always. I would. think in my mind we moved for Jody as far as we could. <laughs> He was out yeah. of his, he was out of his mama's house. Well, then that then and that she, story there you go. And she did, then that then that story didn't deserve of, a movie. That story didn't deserve a movie. Mom, he was out of his mama's house. She didn't and have like an I abortion. Said, and you know what? She got a ring. And he wasn't dead. So <laughs> he that's was dead. And, that, and I'm well, saying, I'll, and, and that I'll, story that story does not deserve a movie. Listen, that deserves a discussion. Well, now like, that well, is that is also up for discussion because there's so many movies out here and it won awards it won awards (laughs) yeah baby boy won awards so the other thing i wanted to say about john singleton so we talked about the fact that he used statistics and quotes and Mm -hmm. stuff to make sure his messages were super clear just in case you didn't get it in the movie i'm going to tell you before the movie even starts what it is i'm trying to do there was another convention that he used in baby boy that he did not use in boys in the hood and thank goodness and that was like (laughs) He had that strange, like, the couple dream. of moments where Jody, adult Jody, was in a womb, and like, and there were also these nightmare sequences that Jody I had. I wasn't even gonna go there, like, because I was. was tr- it was. It was just like. It was just like. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna make a comparison to. You know when we have been talking about musicals. And yeah. I was talking about like my issue with West Side Story yeah. was that the songs didn't move the most story along. But then we saw My Fair Lady and those songs were so integral to us understanding the story. Well, 
what were those dreams that Jody was having? They didn't add value. They didn't help us understand his psyche. And also those moments of him being in the womb, it was like an attempt at something symbolic in a movie that wasn't using symbols. The movie was being explicit about things. And then you had like these couple of moments where they tried to be symbolic. And I was like, you're failing. And just, and that was, it was, it felt so another, disconnected that was from another, the movie. Yeah, just, the, it, just that it was both of the things. It's the tone and it's, it's like, all right, so it's gonna be a person in the womb but a grown man, <laughs> you know, like it sounds like us coming up with a corny thing for the whatever. Yes, what, did you, what did you think of that part? Those parts where it was like he was in a womb. Uh, I thought it was weird. <laughs> I was like, huh. Was okay. it like a West Side Story song to you where it was like, what, what is, no, what is this adding value? You you felt like that about West Side Story songs. <laughs> that was not unanimous. That's true. Um, but <laughs> the, I'm not, I'm a, I'm I, his, bored though, his like, dreams, his dreams, I felt like were important for him because he was seeing why? his life end up dead. Mm. He was mm. see, seeing his life end and he was seeing everybody around him at his funeral crying dying was something that was really important to him he didn't want to die i don't know why but he didn't really like well i think death just seemed awful to him and so final and even him talking about those things with you that like i wanted to make sure you had a child for me so in case i died you know some piece of me would still live on there's parts of Jody I felt like that were, it's almost like something was trying to push through. Like in those parts in the womb, we're showing him, I, I think, right? We're trying to show him being birthed, like growing up, like you're these hard parts of labor, laboring with someone to grow up, like to go do something. Um, and so I think that those dreams were, I, you know how you can look up uh, anytime I have a dream that sticks with me I always like to google what does that mean what does yeah. that mean and I think that for Jody like he was having these dreams knowing his level of awful mm. I think that Jody knew that he was not super awesome and that the women in his life were very clear about telling him that mm -hmm. um but mm. what but also that comes to a question of what happens when you have negative reinforcement Mm. consistently like you're it's a self-fulfilling prophecy almost because you start to think about that yourself so I'm just going to continue to be awful mm -hmm. there's no one to tell me that I'm I'm better than what I am until Melvin came along and was like listen but it's a guns but it's a guns and also to and to that point of having that male presence, that masculine and feminine energy that people need in their life to balance, I think it was important for him. And even just that part where there were maybe, maybe he said one word or two words, maybe that part where he had just gotten done shooting um, Yvette's ex boyfriend. And well, I was about to say Snoop Dogg. I don't Rodney. remember. Rodney. Thank you. Um, after he got done shooting him, that whole exchange between him and Melvin, it was almost like Melvin looking at him saying, and do not go backwards from where this is. Mm. This is mm -hmm. it for you. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're done with this. We're wiping prints off this gun. We're done. And to his mom, there was like, Melvin told me that y'all talked the other day. And he was like, yeah, we did. They didn't have any words. It was a it thug was talk. This, it was it was it a was thug a, talk. It was. And and you know, that Melvin character, I would say he's another one that got more of a development than Jody. I thought they did a really good he, job. He, he, with got, he got some development, but he didn't have an arc. Yeah, but he had more development, I think, than Jody. He had more he had more yes. Yeah. He had much more nuance. But it but it I, was, um, it was I, a more interesting character. We're two and a half hours yeah. in, by the way. 
Well, I, I I will just say there's two things we didn't talk about yet on our list of stuff we're supposed to cover, and that's casting and music. So I don't know if, if y'all wanted to say something. Well, you real talked quick. about casting. I feel like you talked about casting when you named everybody. We know everybody. Okay, you got the list. And I, then <laughs> and then and bro, I wondered what you thought about Ice Cube. I mean, my friend was telling me like when Boys in the Hood came out, um, you know, Ice Cube being cast that way, it was like it was that was newly happening where artists were getting a chance to just be movie stars because they were musical artists. And he was also telling me like um, when Boys in the Hood came out because it was the first movie of its sort in terms of the story it was telling that it brought all kinds of people to the theaters that weren't normally going to the theaters. And so, and part of that was Ice Cube. And so there were, all of these issues with with riots in terms of like gang violence at movie theaters because rival gangs would just happen to go see the same movie <laughs> and and then there'd be like fighting and shooting so i did want to ask you to reflect on ice cube in particular and i'm and pretty role. sure john singleton was like oh i didn't mean for that to happen <laughs> Oh, my bad. I didn't my think bad. about that. I, I mean, didn't think about that. <laughs> Do you remember just, that, bro? Do you remember fighting and stuff breaking out at the movie theater? Um, watching the movie back then, like like I was talking about, it, it definitely gives you that feeling of what Brittany was talking about in a sense of like, yes, this is what's happening. But at the same time, when we see certain things, it, it like when you're, um, when Ice Cube, you know, welcome the challenge of the, the guys pulling up. Or even when he was there at the uh, on Crenshaw and he pulled up his gun. It's like, yeah, you could say that that's stupid, but at the <laughs> same time, you know, it's that's the moment that you would want to identify yourself with if, we're, if you're just thinking about being the cool one in the movie. Yeah. And so um, Doughboy, it was, I, I mean, Doughboy affected how I dressed for a while. You know what I mean? Like I, used, I bought clothes. Honestly, and, and I'm just be honest. Like I bought, I bought clothes. Bec- but like that, the release of Menace to Society and Boys in the Hood. If you weren't of age to really experience that, that was just one of those moments. Yeah. Because to see, because even in, um, um, uh. And um, Minister Society, uh, MC8 was in there. You know, they did. And Too Short was in there. You know what I mean? So, like, you had these people started coming out on these movies just so perfectly capturing what was going on. So to answer your question, it was just a double, because I was a huge Ice Cube fan. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, like, I was a, like, his albums were just, you know, NWA, of course. I mean, I, I was a huge Ice Cube fan. And so to get to see him in the, on the big screen. And he did and, a good job. And to this day, he's one of my favorite people. He did a good job. Just from what, everything I know. Because he was one of the most gangster gangsters who's ever gangstered, right? But <laughs> then he's on... Uh, Honey, are we there yet? He's exactly. a person with the guess what? The person with and guess what? Attitude. He's doing it with no shame. Like, huh, check my bank account. Exactly. If you have any questions, like, aren't we supposed to be making? But fun? you know what? They grow up. Like, He's... we forget that these rappers have to. Uh, Sometimes. Have to. Sometimes. Hey, I hope. I hope that they grow up. Sometimes. And like, Unless even they're right Jody. now. <laughs> Unless Lord. they're Jody. Sorry, I couldn't resist Lord. it. Lord, don't do Jody like that. Because <laughs> if Jody at 30 is going to have a good job, don't do Jody like that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <Yeah. It's> like, <laughs> but I think about like Snoop Dogg. Don't make that face, bro. I think about <laughs> like Snoop <laughs> I think about like Snoop Dogg. You know when she, I know when she was showing them them, them condoms, I was like, "Well, you ain't got to worry about those. Somebody else probably dropped them things." Okay, <laughs> not him. What is? I mean, I was just unprotected, and all the women were letting him. Really, that's a baby boy is a conversation about women. Anyway, yep. <laughs> yep. Oh gosh. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think about Snoop Dogg and how he was talking about. The song that's out WAP by Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B 
and just how it's problematic. And it's funny to hear him say these things and it's like, Snoop. Snoop said that? Let's rewind <laughs> your career. Snoop do said that? <laughs> yeah, it's like... The man who used to walk women around in leashes. Y'all remember first, that? Uh, his first album was called Women Would Be Style. On Leashes. <laughs> But but see, but what but this is even going to the 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 show, the movies, like when you get older, you're like, oh, I used to do that. That's that's, now I now I now I cook with Martha. I got I got I got exactly right. I gotta hear what he I gotta hear what he said, bro. I got I gotta listen. listen. I'll try I have to find it, but yeah. But look, listen. I think we've talked these movies. Oh, we, we, we talked. We them. talked a lot. But, but oh, I, I already then, called it. I yeah. called it from the beginning via text. I said we're going to be on this podcast for eighty-seven days. Yep. And there's well, still more stuff much. we, we <laughs> should cover. Yes. You know, it's yeah. too much. But yeah, let's vote, y'all. Let's vote. Kick us off, bro. You have two single tons to, to confirm. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> R.I.P. Jonathan, what's in R.I.P. Bro, see, that's it's the so good. See that, see that's it's the, that's, really so that's, good. That's the key, Janelle. When you're going corny, you got to go real corny. You if gotta, you're going to go, go. <laughs> if you're going to go, you got to go. Go. But um, man, yeah, I mean. Uh, boldly go. I, I am going to say I will give Boys in the Hood my ton, my single ton. And I'm not going to give Baby Boy my single ton. But, oh, but what I am going to do. I am going to watch several videos on Baby Boy because I am curious to see what people have pulled out of it. And I felt like- And it won because, awards, so- And it won awards. And, 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 and honestly, um, maybe because there's sometimes that somebody can tell you something that just makes you get it. And if the biggest thing that I could say I was, I felt in that movie was that I just didn't get it. So if somebody- so like, I, but I'm curious enough and I love John Singleton enough that I just want to go research it. And maybe at some point later on, I'll, I'll, I'll change my mind. But right now that's, that's how I feel. Yeah, I, um, I give Boys in the Hood a sing my single ton. And Baby Boy, it will not get my single ton, but <laughs> I am going to, I already ordered the ISIS papers. Okay, and shout out to the black owned uh, bookstore that I use mahoganybooks.com in Washington, DC. Um, I already ordered it. And so that is because of Baby Boy. I mean, I've been meaning to read those ISIS mm -hmm. papers since 1925. And finally, I was motivated to like, let me make this purchase and like read this book because of that movie. So I also, bro, have a follow up and a takeaway that's Baby Boy inspired. Nice. Sis, bring us home. Uh, Boys in the Hood, as well as Baby Boy, both get my single ton. My single ton. <laughs> it's you gotta a get it right. The single ton. ton. My single ton. Um, and that is because when I think of classic, I think that they're the audiences. It will still resonate with people. Both of these movies, I think both of them will are can still be timely because all of these characters still exist and all of these problems are still happening in our community, unfortunately. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they are happening at in gentrification. Well, it's like, it's picking up steam. So, you know, um, I- Girl, uh, girl this whole country was a gentrification. Li movement. Listen. America- And we get into- Gentrified to exist. But we don't want to talk about it. Yeah, that's but a whole anyway. other podcast. That's the okay. other right perspectives. Is well, it, but, there but you have is, it, folks. Yeah. Boys in the Hood head. is a classic from the right perspective. Baby Boy is not a classic from the right perspective. Thank you all. Our next podcast, and thank you for hanging in here with us because this was a doozy. The next podcast, we're super excited, is going to be a Coming to America a duo because the uh, Coming to America sequel, it comes out the day before our podcast posts. And so we're literally gonna watch it and we're gonna review it immediately. 
um, so that we can keep our podcasting deadline and um, also just like take in what I am confident, like my expectations are so high for this coming to America sequel, y'all. No. I can't wait. Mine are yeah, so just, low. So high. Mine are uh, so uh, low. Oh, and I'm in, no. And I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I was I'm watching those previews. Uh, I was like. Look, I'm in the middle. I literally don't know what to think. You don't know I, what to I, think. I, I, I don't know what to think. I, I'm just not going to think about it. I'm going to just watch it and see what happens. Yeah. I think like, because like, one of the main characters, I just was like, oh, they're using her. She's not real good. Oh. <laughs> but we'll I think see. that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll y'all, see. thank you for joining us for this super long edition of The Right Perspective. (laughs) We'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye, you guys.